IDW Sonic 30th Anniversary Special Comic. This better be interesting, because I've seen classic Sonic stuff a trillion times. At least it starts out in a brand new place, or at least it calls itself by a new name anyways. It seems like just another green hilly area, but with beautiful pink flower trees. So why are Sonic Tales and Classic Amy all together? This feels like the Sonic Mega Drive special. They find an emerald in the flowers, and Tails says that they don't normally see it lying out in the open. So what changed? Explaining that would not be lazy. Of course it's not as easy as picking it up since Sonic was relaxed. So Metal Sonic gets it, and Sonic's excited while his friends are scared. Sonic's so fond of him that he asks him what high speed thing it'll be between them rather than immediately punching him in the face. Metal Sonic runs away, and for some reason Sonic reacts like he's leaving without doing anything high speed when he's trying to avoid Sonic. But what he means is that Metal Sonic flew away with the Emerald. I guess Sonic knew that, so he couldn't get into a race with him. He tells Amy that he needs a boost. It's an amusing surprise that Amy interprets it to mean that he needs someone to cheer him up. She says that people say nice things about him and he's wonderful, so that's sweet. I don't blame her for not immediately getting it, because she's known for being stuck on the ground. So if he said this to Tails, it'd be understood immediately. And Sonic's in a hurry, so of course he wasn't very clear right away and hoped she'd get it. Amy fortunately admits that she made a mistake and uses her hammer to hit him up in the sky. As usual, there's no attempt at even the barest realism that Sonic is in pain from this, and I have to just assume Sonic is rings. And who knows where she got her hammer from, this is classic Amy. Tails throws Sonic at Metal Sonic. Predictably, he fails because Metal Sonic just speeds ahead even more, making me wonder why it wasn't flying that fast in the first place. Sonic says he'll just reach out and grab a perfectly timed air support. Him saying that immediately telegraphs that this won't happen. This is as predictable as Sonic the comics writing. I'm going into the story blind, and it's immediately giving away all of its twists before they happen. If they think that's worth it for a joke, it's not remotely funny. That's pathetic. Oh, at least he doesn't land in a bunch of flowers like I predicted, and instead Knuckles catches him. Because he was gliding around here and came out of nowhere. He's here because there's trouble. When he was on Angel Island, one of the small animals found an emerald. He was smart enough to find it odd that it was out in the open and nice enough to pet the rabbit for it. He thought that the emeralds only bring trouble, which is also smart. He ended up ambushed by Metal Knuckles. At least I was surprised that he didn't defeat him. Instead, when he had him on the ropes, he cut down a mushroom tree to nearly kill some animals, so Knuckles saved them, and he flew away with the emerald too fast. So his trail led him here. So the goal is for them to get some Chaos Emeralds. The laziest possible idea for a Sonic plot. Knuckles doesn't know his own strength with Tails, but is at least talking nicely to him. They all go away from Amy just as she was looking forward to joining their adventure, and don't even explain why, even though she has a hammer now. I guess because Tails didn't want Sonic to leave him behind. Amy complains that they even left the Emerald Radar behind. They have that? I'm left to assume Tails made it. It seems like Tails still spying on her. Is there anything original here, or just laziness? At this point, I'm wondering if she'll get kidnapped instead of actually getting to go on an adventure and be useful in her own way, purely because that's what happened in Sonic CD, and that'd be going all the way with the lack of effort. Then she sees Mighty holding a boulder over his head. As it turns out, Mighty and Ray can be an IDW after all. Them being not around in the later years of IDW Sonic creates a dark implication that they died. Either that or they got whisked away to another dimension. But the former is dark for a kids' series. And that's the problem with not using them. When the modern Sonic series does nothing but bombard you with classic Sonic imagery anyways. It's absolutely adorable that Sega's insisting on guarding that tiny little bit of classic Sonic. Like guarding the last patch of grass in a polluted park. Only these characters are sacred, I guess. Everything else is still in the present time. I guess Mighty's only throwing the boulder to impress Ray. Did they just meet? He'd be used to it by now. 
Lucky for him, Ray can infinitely float over one space in this continuity instead of having to be gliding forwards all the time like Knuckles. He apologizes to Amy for almost hitting him with a boulder, as I'm wondering why the story is wasting our time with Amy when nothing but dialogue is happening. They better all do something. Cause this is 99% rehash so far. They're nice to each other, with Mighty calling Ray his best buddy. Out of nowhere, Amy says adventures with Sonic, implying that Sonic and Mighty had more than just the one adventure together in the past. Amy shows them her emerald radar and asks for help. Mighty calls Ray Bud, and Sonic and his friends are looking for an emerald too, in an unoriginal looking place. Why should I care about its name when it's clearly been done before? Something gets thrown at Sonic's head, and they have to deal with the one-dimensional bad guys, Bark, Fang, and Bean. You know, technically they were never shown working as a team in the classic era. Maybe the whole team hooligan name comes from Sonic the Fighters, but it'd only be mere text. They never fought on the same side all once, and Fang was without them in his debut game. So this is much more a ripoff of Archie than a classic Sonic reference. When I think of Team Hooligan, I think of Treasure Team Tango. Speaking of ripoff, Fang apparently isn't looking for the emeralds for his own reasons, and it's just doing it because Eggman trusted him again to look for them. Just like Sonic Triple Trouble. I'm left to assume these guys all died at some point in Sonic's childhood. I guess it makes more sense that he only know to look for the emeralds because Eggman told him to do it and where to start, but it'd be more interesting if he was looking for them for himself with an emerald radar of his own. So Knuckles has to fight Bark uninterestingly, and Bean gets sad because of course Sonic didn't miss him, and immediately says he's not gonna miss him either. Bean may have bombs, but he's still the least threatening because his bombs would never be allowed to injure or kill anyone. Might as well not even put him in the fight. Tails sees some cars, and Fang sees an emerald on top of something high up, and summons a spring on his vehicle to progress towards the emerald. And Tails thinks it's cool, taking advantage of his genius side. But I already saw that in Sonic Triple Trouble. He smacks the vehicle with his tails from behind. Surprisingly, Fang does get to actually touch the emerald. But Tails opens the back panel of the vehicle easily, with no explanation that he even pulled a screwdriver out of his shoe first. It messes with the vehicle's wires to steal the emeralds from him. Gee, I wonder if the heroes are all destined to get the emeralds. There's barely even point to reading the story. The reason I read new stories is to get new stories. And at least it's better than literally the plot of Sonic CD again, but with more of Sonic's friends this time, which is what I was anticipating. That's what I complained about with IDW a lot earlier. Fang shoots what look like harmless bathtub plugs and corks at Tails. Sure is miraculous that apparently Fang the Sniper doesn't want to kill anybody. So he insists on having stuff like this to shoot out rather than shooting actual bullets or even lasers like Archie, which at least tried to be cool. At least seeing these is new, because it's not the Pac-Man pellets he actually shot out in Sonic the Fighters. I'd gladly take seeing something new over another lazy ripoff at 3 in the morning. Tails is in pain, but still competent enough to throw the emerald towards Sonic. Why did Bean try to blow up the gem? That was dumb. Then Fang shoots to get the emerald out of Sonic's hand. Bark and Knuckles do a bunch of uncreative fighting, and the emerald ends up being knocked down to the water. And for some reason, Bean doesn't care because he's insane. At least he still has his personality instead of being silent, like I was worried about when he took so long to start talking. And he gets punished because Fang drags it behind him. Tails says he can't land on any ground to get the emerald. And Knuckles is so dazed that he has to be told that he lost the emerald. Knuckles is told to climb the cliff. And because Fang insists on taunting them, I guess, Tails figures out that they're bound to find more while they die for this emerald. So Sonic admits that he's right and decides to focus on chasing them to get the rest first because the emerald's not going anywhere. So these characters were smart for once. Meanwhile, the much less likely thing happened because the ammo landed directly on Mighty's head instead of falling into water. And he was fine because the shell protected his head, so he didn't even feel it. Which makes a lot more sense than him getting a hurt from a hit to the head, I guess, if you assume that his shell is magical enough to be the perfect helmet. Even though if you get hit in the head with a helmet on, you still get hurt. Just not as much. Eggman says that with this footage, all the emeralds are now accounted for. Already? 
I was too bored to pay attention to his scene. So we see Sonic and his friends in Autumn Forest Zone, which is not gonna fool me into thinking it's all that original. We've seen Autumn in Mushroom Hill Zone, and there's been forests like Jungle Zone and Tropical Jungle before, and Frog Forest is a forest. But it does look unique with the loop made of orange bushes. But will it even matter what this place is like? It did matter when the waterfall was a thing, because the emeralds fell down it. Like, Angel Island Zone had a waterfall, though. Sonic ends up on top of the Eggmobile, and Knuckles and Tails easily get the buzz saws on it cut loose, with Tails using a spin dash. Sonic challenges Metal Sonic to a battle race, and Metal Sonic takes off, and he complains again. I guess he flew up in the air so we couldn't follow him. But it looks like he just sped off instead. Why doesn't he go after him? Ray makes himself useful finding the emerald in a tree hole, so that does take advantage of the setting. Though again, I can't help but miss his stutter from Archie. It doesn't seem like it has much of a personality at all without it. So the heroes are nice to each other, and again, Mighty Shell taking advantage of for what seems like the first comic ever, protecting him from Fang's shot. Fang tells him to hand over the emerald. I assume he has magically unlimited ammo, so why doesn't he just shoot them already? Fang's shots get deflected by his shield again as he's spin dashing towards him. It comes out of complete nowhere that Amy's hammer can't even remotely bother Bark. She destroys robots with it! If you punch the robot, you damage your fist, so the hammer is a lot stronger than a fist. Since when is Bark invincible? At least that's unique. It's times like this that make it impossible to tell that the writer even likes Amy, though. Because I never picture this to be how it happens, no matter how young she is. Money casually steals Fang's gun, Bark hangs Amy off a branch, and Mighty throws Fang away. It's nice of Mighty to respect Bark for a similarity to him because he wants to fight right away too. It's surprisingly logical that he can catch his spin dash and throw him in the tree hole because apparently, he's invincible. Even beyond anything rings in a force field afford you because you still get knocked backwards from hits with those, and those are magical too. I don't get it. Ray deflects a thrown bomb with his tail for a change and sends it to the ground, and the animal's knocked out of the tree. Ray catches Amy apologizing, and an explosion bruises them despite not actually hitting them because it sends them flying. And Metal Knuckles smacks Bean to take the animals and fly away. Fang realizes that Eggman's trying to double cross him out of their deal, as Amy has her hand on Ray's shoulder. It's at least new that Fang stops and pants after running for a bit and tells Bean to get the bike. But I don't see the appeal in making him less competent from Archie. I mean, he ran for quite a while in Archie Sonic after he shot Mina. Bean says that he said he wasn't allowed to drive it after last time. They ask what's going on here, and Eggman's just sitting there. Eggman says that it all started when he decided to rebuild Heavy King. That would never happen after he betrayed him. Heavy King was planned to be his chief commander and lead his robots into battle so that he'd have more time to invent and research. It does make sense because he'd need the robots to have some intelligence and independence so that he could think of good battle strategies on his own. He just didn't think he'd betray him, a plot twist that's been done a trillion times. You'd think it'd be common sense to program him to not be able to betray him, even if he has mostly free will, like make a Sally. He could be programmed to be shocked every time he thinks about betraying him. So all this plot twist with Heavy King is doing is making the whole plot seem forced. He broadcasted a convenient override EXE to take control of the Metal series and kick Eggman out of space. I guess because he realized Eggman was an idiot. Knuckles and Bean feel sorry for him. Why would a psycho like Bean cry because of this? Does he want to blow people up with bombs? Why would he have empathy? Eggman says that once Heavy King has the ultimate power of the Emeralds, he'd be unstoppable. So for once, Fang and Sonic shake hands and team up. Okay, this is kind of a more original story than Mega Drive special so far. They go to an icy mountain that was carved to have Eggman's mustache. As if it matters. I've seen 8 trillion ice zones before. The only thing new is the purple clouds. Snowballs with spikes in them are clever, but other than that, who cares? Who the fuck would care about a lazy ice cap ripoff? Sonic sent off his feet twice by Metal Sonic because he was a distracted sassing Eggman. I wish that kind of writing was in Sonic Colors.
because he wasn't being remotely entertaining when he was sassing him. Looking for Sonic, the robot that made him trip twice was polite enough to stand there and do nothing instead of attacking him the whole time he and Knuckles talked. Tails gives Eggman an idea to have a jamming signal, and Eggman grabs Tails' soul and plans to boost the jamming signal with its antenna. Metal Knuckles slices Bean's bomb in half, and after Mighty Shell blocks Metal Sonic's attacks, the Metal Series get re-brainwashed to work for Eggman. And Eggman tells them not to attack Sonic after all, because he thinks he needs the heroes' help against the generic personality-less robot commander. Sonic puts his hand on Metal's shoulder, telling him that they're all on the same team, being nicer to him than Knuckles is to Metal Knuckles, who must be more aggressive because he's not ignoring his enemy like Metal Sonic is. It was immediately predictable that Bean wouldn't be allowed to use explosives to get the door destroyed. Fang's smart enough to explain that he can't risk him caving in the whole place. Mighty and Bark want to knock the door down, and Eggman doesn't want them to because he just had it painted, so he presses a button to open it. Oh, Heavy King does talk. I wasn't expecting that, so that wastes my time. He uses his emeralds to send lasers down as he blathers on that he wants a hard-boiled heavies back. Who cares? He's gonna lose. It was better that he didn't talk in Sonic Mania. Eggman tells Metal Sonic to go fight too, and while Fang sends flying cars at Heavy King, he protects himself with a force field and blasts him away. Lucky for the heroes, they don't get shot in all the time Sonic's making a plan, when the fight was nothing but a constant barrage of attacks before. And it's not even explained to that he can't constantly do what he needs to recharge. Sonic plans to keep him distracted while his friends sneak up and grab the emeralds. Amy considerably tells him to be careful, and Knuckles has to be told for some reason how he plans on keeping him focused on only him. Go figure, he's gonna distract him by insulting him. He says that Eggman never built a peak anything. At least it's realistic that Heavy King did hear his plan. But if he doesn't want his plan to succeed, why does he just interrupt Sonic instantly and try to blast him? Sonic asks why he has a stage and not a throne. He calls his cape a bed sheet and hand-me-down, and asks him what's with that light show. He finally lampshades that he's not turning super like Megasonic did. I thought his throwing lasers around was a display of empowering up to super form. But no, him not being totally golden was supposed to prove he wasn't super apparently. Instead of being creative, when he has a force field when he's super, just like Metal Sonic did in IDW. But it really is a miracle that he's going so long without being blasted at. The plan's carried out, and Sonic spin dashes to knock Heavy King onto the floor whose personality seems barely different than Metal Sonic's. He begs for mercy from Eggman and says that he's just been fulfilling his function because he was programmed to be conquest-driven. Why was he programmed to be deceitful? Why would he think that or say that? That wouldn't help Eggman. It's oddly sweet of Eggman to immediately forgive him and give him his old job because he was technically really well built. I mean, he did re-employ Metal Sonic, but I wouldn't expect him to be in a good mood around him after what he did. That's out of character. He says he's getting him a software patch so this won't happen again. Didn't it happen before in Sonic Mania? So it happened twice! And he's confident in that new patch. Wouldn't you have given him the software patch right after Sonic Mania and avoided this entire plot if that was a thing that could happen? It's surprisingly realistic that all of the heroes left with the Emeralds while Eggman was talking to Heavy King because they were smart enough to anticipate that he'd go back to being their enemy. Eggman expects him to use his forces to track them down somehow when he had the heroes destroy all the badniks while invading the base. It certainly knew of a newly bested world-conquering robotic betrayer to be polite to Eggman right after losing, and to be able to stand afterwards. But there's a reason this wasn't done before. He doesn't even look damaged. He just immediately lost the nerve to fight after Sonic spin dashed at him once. And if he just took a fall that bad, he doesn't look hurt. He gave Sonic much more of a fight in Sonic Mania. Then after Metal Sonic and Knuckles pass out, it's fortunately explained that they ran out of energy after Emerald hunting and fighting. I like that he tells Heavy King to make him a grilled cheese. That's new too. But he's told he won't do that because he's not a chef. Fang says that getting the Emeralds was worth it anyways, and for some reason Amy's nice enough to not only not start a fight with him to try to get the Emerald out of his clutches, but also thanks Bark for apparently loaning her a scarf. She calls him a big sweetie deep down, even though he's fine with hanging out with Fang and Bean. I guess I'm supposed to just assume he thought they were nice people when he first started hanging out with them, and then was forced to stick with them because when their methods made him a fugitive, he couldn't exactly get a paying job or home. 
but explaining that would be good writing. He blushes and leaves. Realistically, Fang wants to get a good mechanic for his vehicle after leaving with it, but it's still well built enough to be able to leave anyways. Sonic chooses not to tell Knuckles why Fang's potential nickname for him or Beans would have been Knucklehead, so that's surprisingly nice. I like that when Knuckles plans on taking the Emerald to the Master Emerald, Sonic says, Cool! And the Master Emerald will have a little sibling. I don't like that he called him weird though. Money says he's gonna go back to training, because apparently he's so insecure that he thinks he's not as best. It's bad enough he was obsessed with training for no reason in the Archie reboot. And he calls Ray a little buddy. Money says he'll help split the Emeralds up, and Tail says safe travels. Sonic thanks Amy, admitting that he wouldn't have gotten to this point without her. Tails thanks her for looking after the Emerald Radar, and fortunately has a long overdue apology about leaving her behind with no explanation, which had been oddly rude of him. It's nice of Tails to say he won't do it anymore. Even Sonic says he won't, but he'll break that promise to SC2 anyways, so it means nothing. Why did he run away from Tails? What was he gonna do? Explaining that would be good writing. And it should have made me say that so many times. In the next story, we see Sonic in a car, and he says to someone that he's onto something. It seems like he must be doing a driver's license test. Because otherwise, why is someone with a clipboard in the front seat next to him and trying to get his attention? Sonic tries to justify why he's in a car, nicely calling him old buddy. He says that when he smashes Badniks and runs around the planet for a lap, which would require faster than sound speed, just like an Archie. Then he apparently ends up with blisters making him want a car. He also says that he likes to listen to the radio. It makes sense that Sonic's so full of himself that he's going on and on without wanting to listen to what this guy has to say to him. Sonic's predictably called out for not going the speed limit. He thought the brakes were a turbo pedal at first. I guess he's never watched TV before. He's so used to his own speed not causing problems for other people. That's instinctive for him to not think of speed as dangerous to people. I wish that was explained though, because he's supposed to be a good guy. He's reluctant to break, and is told that there's a red light and there's other cars in the intersection. So he gets out of the car. Is he even trying to get his license? I'd like to point out that you need to do a written test first and pass it before you're even allowed to get to the driving part of the driver's test. Sonic would have failed the written test. He wouldn't even get this far. He stands in front of all the other cars, but that doesn't explain why they magically all stop in time. The driving instructor actually asks him what he needs a car for, because apparently he was ignoring what he was saying the whole time. He's getting a car for chili dogs. I guess to store them and take them to his house. He wants to get the best chili dogs. And the chili dog restaurant is holding a car race, and the Grand Prix prize is a lifetime supply of chili dogs. I guess what he means is, he needs the car to hold all those chili dogs. Sonic's told he failed the test, and is satisfyingly called out on his recklessness. But you'd think he'd care about driving safely anyways. It obviously put other people in danger not to do so, and he's not a psycho. Surprisingly, he is allowed to keep driving after this, and he hates driving at normal speed. He finds out that the chili dog race he mentioned is in 5 minutes. So he speeds up in the car instead of simply getting out of it and running away much faster for some reason. And somehow he's able to drive the car through a loop just fine. And Sonic's told that the road rally is being postponed because Eggman's attacking the city across town. Surprisingly, the instructor completely changes his personality and says that he wants to stay with him and experience some real speed. And he's nice enough to say that he can retake the tests in 10 days. Then the next story, Eggman wakes up in the morning, takes a shower, and he said it's his birthday again because that means he has another year where he's accomplished nothing. I think that's something I'd expect more from Sonic Boom Eggman, not the arrogant IDW Metal Virus Arc Eggman. The Badniks all celebrate his birthday with a party he's not celebrating anyways. He doesn't appreciate a doll in his likeness somehow, and yet he likes statues of himself. People think this writer gets the characters, it's not that hard to get simple characters. He's given a drawing, and I'm confused because apparently he told the robots to knock it off, and they disobey his orders and don't, somehow. This is a confusing story, but it's also a sweet one. Apparently he was given a hammer to smack a Sonic doll. This story is mostly about what you see in it, not really about the plot, isn't it? Boring. Like, what am I supposed to say? There's a picture of Sonic on the wall? 
He expects a surprise party, sees Sonic on the camera, and tells his robots to return to base as the launch sequence is complete. He says his robots aren't equipped to deal with Sonic all of a sudden. Why does he make them then? So a bunch of robots want to attack Sonic on their own for Eggman's birthday. How are they able to choose to do that? Lucky for him, they obey his orders and go home, because Eggman told his robots not to attack Sonic for almost the first time in the history of the series. And they give him a cake, which he doesn't appreciate because he's out of character the whole story. This issue by Ian Flynn was about Sonic, Tails, Knuckles, and Amy, and Mighty and Ray trying to look for all the Chaos Emeralds. Looking for all the Chaos Emeralds is the most lazy, cliché plot ever. And Eggman hired Team Hooligan to go look for them too. It also has a robot of Eggman's betray him and try to fight Sonic by himself, which directly rips off Sonic Mania's special ending and even the Egg Robo. And he throws around energy attacks with the power of the Sabin Emeralds, go figure. And Eggman had to team up with the heroes because his minion betrayed him. Which is just every modern Sonic game's plot twist ever. The monster of the week formula done to death. Is there anything new here? This is just a bunch of plots that were done before. We already saw Fang try to look for the Chaos Emeralds in the Great Chaos Caper. What's the point of reading a story if it's mostly just the same thing? It's a good thing the settings were original, or I'd be bored to death. Actually, when I was reading the story, I was constantly pleasantly surprised by the new ideas. So I actually kind of liked the story. But I can't not mention all the old ideas, because they're the whole premise. I'm glad it wasn't mostly a retread of one particular Sonic game plot like Sonic CD. But since nearly every Sonic game plot's about these two goals for the heroes, it might as well have been the same plot again. It was interesting to see an emerald fall over a waterfall and an emerald being in a tree taking advantage of the settings in the only way the story made them memorable. And Mighty's shell was being consistently used as great armor against any attack, and Fang was shooting corks from his gun. Overall, its impression on me is that it's just another typical classic Sonic plot with the typical characters, not even having the guts to have modern characters interact with them. I've seen forests and waterfalls in Sonic before. An autumn-like setting was in Sonic and Knuckles already. Forests feel only comparatively creative for Sonic from the rarity, but an ice level? I was just thinking, how dare they have another ice area after the Sonic Mega Drive special? We're doing this again? It's just a story that's there for nostalgia. It's alright, but it barely adds anything to the franchise if it's just recycling ideas that were cliches for the Sonic series for decades. At least it was new that Tails lifted up the back panel in Fang's vehicle in the classic era. At least the Sonic Mega Drive special had brand new MacGuffins for the heroes to go after, and having Eggman be the villain the whole time felt more interesting and menacing than the old hat of a brand new villain betrayed Eggman again. And you're expected to take him completely seriously when it'll just be a one game gimmick. And barely has a personality. Considering Sega didn't allow the comics to use characters like Mephiles and Infinite and Black Doom and Eggman Nega because they're supposed to be dead or defeated, you'd think that same rule would apply to Heavy King. Because wasn't he destroyed in Sonic Mania? Or at least defeated. Not to mention, everyone felt like the Deadly Six were killed at the end of Sonic Lost World, so it was surprising that Zavik showed up again. And the other two stories are pretty basic, but at least they're more interesting original and premise than that one. There was Sonic taking a driving test and failing, and somehow he was allowed to drive when he must have failed the written test. And there's a day in the life of Eggman where he's completely out of character the whole time. 